Nice. No. What? Did you say no? Yeah. Oh. Uh, oh, OK. No, uh, hello, everybody. Uh, another uh, tough tech talk. Uh, we have prepared a few uh, agenda items. Um, I have a question or comment to one of uh, Gage's uh, topics, the time to merge um, bot. And uh, I'm going to start with the first one, Cabochet Naming Convention, that is a leftover from um, last week. So I was able to change the, the shown title on the GitHub Marketplace uh, for this application. But nevertheless, the application URL or the uh, title, the the title of the browser window still reads uh, the wrong name. I, I can't figure out if I really can change that thing. Is it worth uh, recreating the application or is that too much maintenance effort um, because we need to create a new application and stuff like that? I don't think it would be uh, too big of issue to, from the maintenance side. It would be an issue from the customer side because we would have to. Uh, we don't keep a track of uh, chemistry users, right? We don't keep a database of who is installing it, who is using it. Uh, we don't entirely serve them. So we, if there is someone who we will miss out just because they have installed Kibbutz and not chemistry, that's the only thing which I can think of, which is not. Oh, maybe we can find out somewhere in GitHub APIs to find who all is using those things. But that's the only thing which I feel would be difficult to do. Plus, there's uh, REST secrets management and stuff. We can, I think we can. Is it worth uh, doing so? Or is it um, just a, a beauty thing? Who, who, who was talking about that? Um, people were confused. Hashad, was, was it you giving that feedback? It was Pep who started the conversation. Uh, ah, yes. But I think everyone res resonates with it. Yes. Uh, it's more more of a, more of a convenience from a re like readability point of view. Uh, I'm reading that I have to open issues in Kemishet, but I have to install a bot called Kemishet. Uh, like I will be the first instance as a user might be confused if they are both the same project. So that, that's the viewpoint from there, which this question came up. What was the thing that you couldn't change? The At least the URL, I'm going to drop it into this uh, ephemeral chat here. Uh, the URL on the marketplace, GitHub marketplace, still reads Kebehood. Um, the the title of the application itself I could change. I think it's probably fine. Um, how how does it appear when it opens pull requests and stuff? Yeah, exactly. That would be my next question. Have we looked through all the source code that it is okay? Maybe we just change some header field that we're going to send to GitHub, and then the, the appearance is correct. From my side, I think this is okay. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see. I wonder, do, do we have do we have some um, examples, current examples of where, where it's happening? Anybody has seen uh, Kebeshet doing stuff lately, like today? It, it looks like its name will, will stay the same. I, I went to my installation information, and it was the, the username was still Kebeshet. Mm. But 
don't we don't we provide an don't we provide an JSON file where some authentication information is is part of? Or is it no. ah? Maybe the GitHub uh, marketplace is uh, carrying that um, as an identifier, as a user ID, and therefore it shows up as the unchangeable user ID in, in every interaction. Okay, let's see. Um, let's see. I'm gonna carry that uh, item over to the next next meeting. Um, what else? Um, the time to merge bot um, gauge. I don't know if you have that um, issue handy in some of your many browser tabs. Uh, maybe you can paste it in there. Um, and I commented it on the on the team uh, chat. Right from from my point of view, uh, unless you say otherwise, because good reasons. Uh, from my point of view, we should go with a GitHub application because it offers the most opportunities to interact right if we imagine something like uh, we want to get a little bit of user feedback by uh, using thumbs up thumbs down like uh, hey man i i really liked your comment or hey bot i really like your comment and the time to merge was really accurate um, which could be an indicator for us to retrain or not retrain the model i think that is easier to handle if we are going with a with an application and um, as Tom said on the Zig Services meeting, yeah, for sure, there's a natural evolution, right? If, if you're going to start easy with a GitHub action, which is hard to debug, that is what I understood from, from Maya. If we go with a GitHub action, it might be easier right now here from the start, but the, the, the probability, the likelihood that we're going to re-implement it as an application is pretty high, I'd say. So I, I would really go ahead and say, mm, let's talk about the user experience and let's uh, think about it as a GitHub application because it A, seems to be, uh, seems to have the most potential in the future. It might be a little bit easier to marketing that thing and it is easier from a user experience because I added once to my organization, configure the repositories I want to act it on and don't have the need to go through the dot uh, GitHub workflows kind of thing and drop YAML files in 500 repositories. Does that make, make sense somehow? Or do you guys think, no, 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 action is way easier. We should go for it. Or is, it, is an action okay for uh, doing a prototype thing? I, I, I don't know. Can an action comment on a pull request? Do we, do we want yes. the model to comment on a pull request? I can use uh, an external GitHub action that already does that. Um, like, I think you have uh, the GitHub provided ones and other ones. You can integrate it to your uh, GitHub action workflow. Like, you don't have to recreate it from scratch. But yeah, it can, can do it. Wait, uh, what you say? Um, there, there is an action that will comment on a, on a pull request. And yes. uh, I would create a workflow that is first step uh, talking to our service and getting the prediction and second step would use that existing action to comment on the workflow uh, sorry yes. on the pull request that's okay. it. that's already what uh, what you use in the in the that github action like to set up a python environment in this kind of six it uses external actions mm. i see hmm. also not bad i don't care you guys make up your mind. I, I obviously I'm biased too because I like uh, GitHub applications more than uh, GitHub Actions. But in the end, it really doesn't matter how we're gonna do it. Just be quick. The only I think I mentioned this in the in the in our dev chat, but the only reason I like the actions is because it gives you that UI at the bottom of a PR that tells you if it's been completed or not or if it's failing. 
you might not always get that or it might not look as good with an application because an application's interface is just commenting on the PR, if I'm correct, right? But I, I think that... Yeah, um, depends. I mean, um, uh, your application could also set an, an status uh, information and it, would, it will show up like the... the uh, prowl things uh, that we have on the end of each pull request. Oh, okay. I mean, if it can do that, then yeah, let's go with the application then, because I thought only the GitHub Actions can do that. Maybe we should, um, maybe we should uh, go ahead and see what GitHub things is uh, the, the, the evolution of all that stuff, right? Because I think at some point in time they said that the status information that Pro is using is not the preferred way anymore because they want everything in the um, in the whatever it's called. Let me have a short look. Um, in the checks tab. So on, on every pull request, there's a checks tab, and that also carries uh, these continuous integration checks, for example. How should the user experience look like? I mean, the model will say something like, um, we think that the pull request will be merged in about nine days. That feels to me like, yeah, nice comment. Let's let's handle it as a comment. Yeah, or we could add the if we want to be more technical with it, we could add the top three predictions if the predictions are close to each other. Because with the model it gives you the how accurate each prediction would be. So it might be worth showing a couple other ones if they are close to each other. Unless we just plan want to say this is the top one. I I don't know. I would go with the top one and see what happens. And maybe I would focus more on the user feedback, like thumbs up, thumbs down. Um, thanks for that information. It was pretty accurate. That seems to be uh, interesting. Um, having the top three uh, predictions feels interesting to the data scientist. Maybe that is something that we should keep in mind for ourselves. If you're going to send me a pull request in a repository, maybe we keep that information somewhere on our side. And we can always set configurations for the bot that can add, like, hey, I want to see a more complex view versus a simple view. Let's go uh, with an application or whatever it is that is putting a comment in here. And it basically says, oh, um, I looked at all the stuff. I think it's going to take you five days. And um, shall we do a little bit of feedback, like thumbs up, thumbs down, so that we get it, uh, get an idea if people like it or not? Or is that uh, too much right now? I mean, I don't think it'd be that much harder to implement, but mm. as part of the MVP, maybe not. OK. And just a question. Uh, like when the pull request is actually merged, uh, does the app get any feedback or something like that on the delta, uh, like predicted time versus real time? No, there's no um, reinforcement for the model. I think it's just. I mean, we could probably track some reinforcement, but okay. As is that something? Um, is it something that we would um, detect using an action? Or, or... yes. Okay. You can you can trigger an action on any kind of event on GitHub. It can be like PR merge or something like that. So. Yeah. So uh, what what's happening here is uh, MI is already doing that. Uh, MI would be. Uh, would be observing this organizational repository. So it is continuously ingesting information based on pull requests or issues. So if someone closes it, approves it, and does any action on that pull request. 
it's technically being observed by by MI. Uh, so uh, and that's the data which this model is using. So I don't know if direct ingestion of this thing is needed, but am I updating the database is what would help this model? So from a service point of view, this would be a good metric to track and maybe show to the users on a metrics website where they can manage their model. Mm -hmm. But I understood correctly, these are features that we're not going to do for the MVP, right? Um, thumbs up, thumbs down. Uh, we don't want it right now because MVP is really focusing on, we want to have that server side, which is running the model web service, right? And we want to figure out, uh, do we do it as an uh, action or as an application and implement the rather simple client side? Because I, if I understand correctly, the client side just going to talk to the web service and say, hey, I'm pull request 15. What do you think? Is that, is that correct? Yes. Yes. OK. OK, let's do it. Um, So what is your last comment, uh, Hashad? Um, MI is observing and gathering all the data. And how, when will the model retraining be gathered? Uh, sorry, when will the model so, retraining be triggered? So this is exactly how Todd works, right? Uh, it's not like user, say, user has a has a advice, and, and then we don't find a package, we don't start. Uh, we don't directly start saying, oh, next time it will be available there. Right? Mm -hmm. We try to ingest it. Similarly, MI will see if this pull request is new. It will start to gather this data. Now the model the model will again retrain on this. That service is again put into selling to our uh, servicing API. And then, then that's when a user can reuse it. Mm. OK. Nice. Let's do that. I mean, that's, that's already happening. No, no, yes. no need to do anything. I think uh, to make it faster, there could be these solutions, which uh, we like we were discussing right now to make like sending this information and stuff, right? Some models, so this would be very sparse data if you're saying, oh, only this pull request got, to, got merged right now, right? It needs a, a, a subset of things like, okay, 10 pull requests merged in this many minutes or these many reviewers review it. Things like that. Yeah, I was on precise. By by, let's do that. I meant let's get that service going. That's cool. on gauge. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let, let's figure out if you're going to do an action or an application. Um, and uh, gauge, you're going to work on it. Uh, Kevin, could you help with that if it's a bot? I think it's all pro bot framework uh, again and again, right? So cool. that's when where I'm not sure. Uh, pro bot is mostly written in JavaScript or TypeScript. Uh, and this could really use something very simple as Python. Uh, technically, we don't need much in this 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 bot as of now. I, that's what I think. Uh, so replicating either Kebisha, uh framework or the circuit API framework should be easier. And that could suffice for the MVP. That's what I feel. Uh, we can go for ProBot, but I think that would be like Again, uh, finding a new wheel, that's what I would say, think from my perspective. The, the one reason I like ProBot is because of the, um, you're, not, you're not spinning up a new, new container every time a, a request comes, which is, is good. Um, yeah. That's what I think you can either use SevKit RV as well. I was just, yeah. uh, my concern is with just the language, because here yeah. you would have to use the MI, MI package. Uh, and it would be, if we are doing it in TypeScript, then we have to, again, do manipulations or migrations from that perspective. That's what I feel. Mm, I see. Um... Technically, if you remove all the code, source code in SevKit API and just put this request, or you, if you don't even remove, just add this function, it will still work. It yes. will just work as it's working right now. 
uh, there's just one function to be added on pull request. That's it. If that's what we're going for MVP. That's also a good one, right? Um, because if you can say you can refactor everything that we're going to need for this one into one Python method, and we're going to plug that into ZFKDRP, that seems to be the least engineering effort here, right? Ah, I don't care. I'm 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 a manager, Gage and uh, Kevin and uh, Hashar. Make up your mind what you're going to do. Just keep in mind we need to maintain it. Uh, so don't go with GoLang. I am just here to confuse everyone. No, no, no. That's my job. I ask the silly questions here. You, you answer. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. L let's see. Uh, we should keep on moving uh, on that one. Um, um, it's, it's, it's actually not confusing. Um, it is a good reminder that we have an up and running instance, an application, and a framework uh, that could be easily used. At the same time, I see uh, Polbot as a mm -hmm. framework that is uh, heavily used by all the other people in the universe. I, I, I'm unsure if we, if we're going to talk about, if we're going to talk about uh, an MVP, and we really just can refactor into one method and plug that into i'm pretty sure there is a on pull request method now on on zef get up that seems to be like one one line of code and um a rather tiny commit uh, that we're gonna do okay good what else we got? Any any more comments to the time to merge board? Noise. Uh, Gage, you put the feedback on bot per management in there. What is that? Yeah, so this was a topic added to uh, SIG user experience, and it was a the issue was urgent, so I thought we could talk about it here. It's referencing um this uh, micro pipm uh, project and someone requesting to disable ah. it on it and i was just wanted to discuss the um the um the the, the comment that was posted at the bottom about feedback yeah Um, what is he talking about? Is he really? Is he, he's talking about pro. Yeah, I think so. So uh, I think in that repository, Kevishet is not doing uh, anything because uh, the I think requirements are written in. Uh, Slightly different format, or the path ML is not there somewhere. But the pro is what he, I, I figure he's talking about. Uh, so we can disable it now. Yeah, I'm. I wonder why we should do that uh, or would like to do that um, because it's uh, just adding some good labels. Um, I see that um, auto closing of issues. I, I don't know what auto closing of issues is. The I mean, stale, it's stale removal. That's what he's talking about. Like after ah. 30 days, it says stale. After more 30 yes. days, it says rotten. Okay, that is uh, just one of the plugins um, that we, we, we can disable that. Um, better go ahead and maintain the life cycle of your issues if you don't want the bots to close them. That could be one of the answers. Um, but I see. Isn't uh, Lumia? Ah, he's sitting around in Czech Republic. Who's also in Czech Republic? Nobody. Mm, that's a problem. I, I'm going to talk to to him because um, I think we can completely disable Pro on on that repository. Um, 
I don't know if he doesn't like all the feature, the labels uh, that we're going to use. I can understand that um, features, uh, sorry, issues being automatically closed after 90 days is kind of annoying. I wonder why they are still open or why he's not just using the, the source and uh, just put a um, lifecycle frozen on top of it. Last PSA. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to talk to him, and um, um, I'm I'm good with uh, disabling all that stuff. If it's no value to them, that's good. It's just Lumia, uh, Lumia uh, working on that stuff, anyways, right? Do do does anyone of you contribute to MicroPipend? All right. Good. Mm, what else we got? Um, four, three, four. Correct. There's another um, issue I put in here. Um, I think it's following the same um, pattern that we have seen before. Um, TOS advices are very verbose. Um, we talked about clustering and meta information and, and making it a little bit easier. I talked um, to uh, Marcel and he said, why can't we have a simple batch? Uh, like, like your pull request is A-OK, -okay, uh, batch kind of thing. Um, that is why why um, Maya and I talked yesterday and I said, why, why, why don't we take one of the metrics we, we have anyway? Uh, in our database, like uh, the uh, scorecard information, and uh, generate a um, generate a um, comment on a pull request out of that metric. That is uh, what this is all about. So the idea is um, have a little bit simpler output. Ultimately, <clears throat> uh, information like um, your pull request is good. Um, but if we are talking about the software maintenance, the software quality domain, we have figured out that your pull request is decreasing the quality of your whole software stack by 5%, something like that could ultimately be the uh, answer here. Uh, again, this is an informational uh, comment, not an actionable uh, comment that we're going to put out there. It, it somehow follows the pattern that we want to educate um, software engineers what's happening in their stack. And it feels like we could do that easily, right? Um, within five hours or days or weeks or so, that we really uh, create the infrastructure for putting out that, that first um, MVP. Hey, we figured out that 95% of all your transitive dependencies are not using or are using the dependency management tool. Why is a dependency management tool interesting? Um, I don't know if I did that. A little bit of argumentation or a little bit of rational on the um, SSF. Uh, on the um, benefits of using a dependency tool, I'm going to put that in the show notes here. Mm. Background on why dependency management tool. So the scorecards organization um, is basically saying um, if 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 a lot of your dependencies don't use dependency management tools, it is very likely that errors will not get fixed, like CVEs and stuff like that. Imagine there's a pretty low level um, software package, uh, low level from a dependency tree point of view. There's a pretty low level having uh, a CVE. There's a mid-level thing which is using that. It's introducing that CVE into your um, software stack. If the low level is fixing the CVE, 
but the mid-level is not pulling in the updated version automatically, you still carry that CVE, even though the low level has fixed it, because some mid-level dependency is simply not being updated. To de reduce that risk, it is clever to have a high rate of dependency management tool in your transitive dependencies. Does that make sense? Yes, somehow, kind of. So, uh, general sentiment, let's gather this data that we have anyways. Let's prepare it in an easy to consume way. Let's put that as a badge on pull requests because that is what most people understand easily. And uh, let's, let's uh, send that out to, to the world, like have that service available um, by our bots. explanation why uh, we have that um, 434 issue created. Any any questions, comments, ideas? Good. All this is regards to the workflows which are running on pull requests, uh, like for example, the pre-commit, the GitHub action. Ah, mm, yeah. Uh, good question. Um, it is whenever an advice is generated, right? Because um, I think the advice is carrying that information, um, that 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 meta information about your software stack, that ninety five percent of your dependencies, blah blah blah. Is that is that correct, Maya? That is what we think, right? Yes. And so I understood the goal would be to compute those metrics um, so directly in advice report. So when the advisor is done and like provides the report, but um, in this case, you would have to consider, for example, the, um, I don't know if we have that anymore or if we deleted it, but um, the count of uh, software stack generated, for example. So you would have to compute that uh, every time a software stack is generated by final, like final state. Um, so you would have to integrate that directly into advisor, I guess. So, yeah, and you have to adapt, like, um, I guess the report and everything using the report. So API points, etc. So the, um, the, uh, GitHub action would take that advice output and um, extract information out and would create a, a comment out of that. So that we, in the end, we're gonna see that comment like 95%, blah, 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 blah. Is that correct? Yeah, it could do that. Uh, yeah. Like currently it's not used anymore, the, the pull request comments because I, I had to refactor the action and I deleted this uh, feature. I can reintroduce it and in this case, it can, can output like the, what we want to see in the reports. Is an is an is is every action in a GitHub workflow its own container, or can they share information? Um, so every action you you mean like um, action you use within also actions or like uh, different workflows, like what exactly? Mm, same workflow, different different task or different action. Um, so I. I, uh, I think you can run jobs separately, but not steps. So steps are part of jobs in a workflow and you can have jobs uh, running in parallel and uh, on different VMs or containers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Cool, I'm good. I don't have any further topics, any further questions. You you have some? Cool. Then uh, let's keep on implementing two or three bots. Um, uh, let's extend existing stuff and um, let's make it easy for users to consume our information. Thanks everybody. See you later.